I invite you to please join me now as we go into our time of meditation. In Shamatha Vibhashana meditation, we begin to sit upright. Just gently closing the eyes or just leaving the eyes open and finding a spot to gaze on the floor. Hands gently resting on the thighs. Just simply becoming aware of our breath as it enters throughout, enters the body, moves throughout the body, and just exits the body. No force, just allowing it to happen naturally. Just keeping the breath soft and keeping it relaxed. Perhaps even just saying to yourself, be right here with the breath as it goes out. Be right here with the breath as it goes out. Acknowledging that being here with the breath is being fully present right here with whatever is going on, whatever is taking place. Being fully present right here, right now. Being right here with the breath as it goes out. Sounds outside or other things may try to draw your attention away. But we bring our attention always back to the breath. Sitting right here, aware of the breath as it goes out. Be right here with whatever is going on. And as we prepare to enter into a time of silence, we are fully here with the breath and fully present right here and right now as we move into the silence.
as we begin to bring our attention back to this present moment, we carry with us this knowing that we always have the breath to bring us into this present moment. The in-breath, the pause between breaths, and the exit of the breath to always remind us to be here, to be fully present right here and right now in this present moment. Being right here with whatever is going on. Right here and right now. We allow this to be. Namaste. We continue to be present in this moment as we move into our time. I was thinking we need one of those tracks of hand clapping because y'all deserve more applause than just me out here. And I know people from home are applauding, but it just sounds kind of quiet in here. So, <laughs> But thank you, Unity Jazz Band. That's awesome. It's always a treat every time we have the jazz band here. So if you're tuning in for the first time, we have it. What, y'all usually hear one about once a month or so? Yeah. Every, okay, every third Sunday of the month. Or So, you know, tune in if you like that. We We'd love to have you here and love to hear the jazz. So anyway, I'll get into the talk now. So anyway, everybody knows probably if you've seen me talk before, you know I like to start with questions by asking questions. So I'm going to start today again with asking a question. Well, first of all, we are in, I mean, we've got what, to, including today, we've got two more weeks of our book study. We've got next week and then it's going to be, you know, this book is coming to an end, but it's been such an amazing book for just such an, a time that we really need it right now. I mean, it's always needed, but just especially now with everything that's been going on. So if you're tuning in for the first time, we've been studying uh, Pema Chadron's Welcoming the Unwelcome. So highly recommended book. I highly recommend you get that. And if you would like a study guide, contact us here at the church and we'll be happy to send you one. Okay, so back to the question. So my question is today, to ask you today is, have you ever just stopped? I mean, really just stopped and just sat right here in the now. In this true present moment of right here and right now. Or maybe just allowed yourself to just stop and to just be in that place that's between events in your life. Probably at least for most of us, I mean, I know it's true for me. You know, we finish a project and then we either just physically move on to the next one or at least move on to that next one in our heads. You know, oh, I just finished such and such. You know, I'm crossing this off my to-do list and now it's on to the next thing without just that pause in between. You know, take meditation, for instance. You know, most of us are taught to focus on the breath during meditation and to really pay specific attention to that pause that's between breaths. That pause where it, where it appears that nothing is happening, right? But what if during that pause, what if that is where everything is happening? That moment of silence, that moment of what appears to be pure nothingness, pure emptiness, pure nowness. Now, I recently mentioned in one of the a group of people that I was speaking with, of, I talked about my time of living in Dallas, Texas. And it's a great city, and it's got a lot going on there at any given time. But it's also something that I began to see, and yes, I labeled it, going back to labels that we've talked about, I labeled it as frenetic. Now, I love big cities. Mindy and I both, you know, we've talked about how we love big cities. I like what they have to offer. You know, I like having my choice of being able to do whatever I want to, whenever I want to do it. Now, whether I actually take advantage of those things or not is another story, but I like to know that the options are there. But Dallas is a whole other story. Now, Texas, if you've ever been out into, you know, like West Texas, there's just like nothing out there. In Texas, out, there, out in that part of the country, or state especially, they've got these really high speed limits. Because you'll get on on these highways and it may be miles before you come across anything else, you know, gas stations or anything. 
or any other sign of life, really. So it's not uncommon to come across speed limits of 85 mile, 80 to 85 miles per hour. Now, the main speed limit on one of the main roads, or the, one of the speed limits on one of the main roads going through downtown Dallas is no exception. That speed limit is it's 70 or 75 miles per hour, and that is going through the middle of downtown Dallas. And people there like their expensive toys. You know, it's not uncommon to be sitting in your car, you're gripping the steering wheel as hard as you possibly can, sitting on the edge of your seat, your knuckles are turning this bright white because you're gripping the steering wheel so hard, saying affirmation after affirmation when suddenly a Ferrari just zooms past you. I mean, just almost in a blur. And this isn't just during rush hour traffic. It's all the time. That is life living in Dallas, Texas. And I found myself often feeling a bit anxious while sitting there in traffic. And it, it, I, I began to realize that I had no idea why after a while that I was feeling anxious. But there was always noise and always chatter. There was always something. And you're always thinking about the next thing or what you need to do or what you should have done. You know, oh, I should have exited off right there. Now it's going to be another 20 miles before I can exit and turn around. Or I need to get over there right now so that I can make my exit and end up on the place that I need to be. But I find here in Madison traffic that I can just relax. So thank you, Madison. I mean, I still stay alert when I drive, but that constant chatter in my mind to do this, do that, watch out for this, watch out for that, it's just gone. So thank you. But I found it in Dallas to be difficult to relax into the nowness. Now, obviously, you can always find a way to rest and relax into the nowness, whether you live in Madison or you live in New York City, because we know that it's really got nothing to do with what's going on out there. It's got nothing to do with what's going on in that highway. It's what's going on within ourselves, right? There are just a part of those things that we, we tend to, going back to last week's reading, place a label on. I labeled Dallas as frenetic, so to me it became frenetic. Now, Pema says we can take advantage of nowness by doing something called a pause practice. She mentioned standing in line, in a slow-moving line at the post office, maybe when you're on your lunch break or in your kind of, you're in a hurry to, you know, to get back to wherever it is that you're doing. But you can certainly focus on how slow the line is moving and how irritated this is making you, or you can pause for a moment, drop some of that chatter, some of that need to label and so forth, and to just relax into the nowness and into this present moment. Now, the traffic in Dallas, I mean, in reality, it wasn't good or bad. It might have made it a bit easier for myself if I had just sat into the present moment. You know, okay, my hands are now on the steering wheel. You know, my foot is on the gas pedal. Look at the skyscrapers and how wonderful that architecture is, while still paying attention to safety, of course. But Pema mentions, though, when we relax in the nowness, she says, you are free from concepts such as, oh, poor me, or I don't have time for this, and are instead just enjoying nowness. Now, nowness also helps us with that constant need to be moving from one thing to the other without that pause in between. She states, instead of thinking about what just happened or planning what happened next, just enjoying the space to pause, the, to pause the conceptual mind and touch with the nowness. And part of what so often prevents us from just relaxing into the nowness is our good friend, the ego. Now, ego believes very strongly that it needs to be in control in each, of each and every moment. It's going to tell you that you, know, you need to be control, in control of each and every moment. Not knowing or planning what's going to happen next, well, says ego, that's just not allowed. You've got to be in constant chatter and constant motion. You've got to plan. What about this or that if you don't plan ahead? What's going to happen? Uh-oh, what if this scenario happens? Got to plan, got to plan, got to plan. Throw in a little bit of worry, too. You need to worry, too. That's what ego says. But being in the nowness of life really just kind of takes ego out of the equation even if only for a moment. And sometimes all we need is a moment above water to catch our breath, right? 
we, part of the thing is too, is that we are constantly in the back of our minds. And I'll explain. For instance, I find that Evan leads much of my life. You know, Evan always finds the need to place a label on something. To be in a constant state of moving from one thing to the other with no pause in between. To pay attention to very material, very physical things that are going on in life in any given moment. To all of those things that are out there. But am I really Evan? I mean, who is Evan really? You know, is Evan minister? Husband? Writer? Speaker? Aren't these things just labels or, as Pema states, empty identities? Maybe I carry the persona of these things, but am I really these things? These are how the physical world likely sees me. More of what the eye sees, the physical persona of Evan. Now, being enlightened doesn't mean that we aren't going to suddenly stop seeing ourselves and other people this way. I mean, even yogic teachings acknowledge the body and acknowledge the need to bring the body into the equation, but is that, true? Is that really who we truly are? We know we aren't ever going to likely be rid of ego. As long as you're in this human experience, you're not going to ever likely be rid of ego, but even Pema has referenced her own in the book, but the good news is, is that we don't have to ever be rid of ego. We don't have to be rid of ego to live our life in the now or to live in an awakened state. Pema says the idea that we need to get rid of ego is a misunderstanding, one that many people, even experienced Buddhist practitioners, share. Again, that makes me feel a little bit better to know that Pema shares that, and even Buddhist practitioners still have the ego. But even to attempt to get rid of ego is going to add undue stress that we don't have to endure. We don't have to add that stress to ourselves. We can make friends with ego. That's the good news. We can make friends with ego. We can, as Pema states, get to know it intimately. So typically, we know by now that ego likes to resist. What happens when you just suddenly decide that you're going to cut sugar from your diet? And I know I've mentioned that before because I've tried it. Suddenly, I found myself craving chocolate ice cream. I wanted a big bowl of chocolate ice cream, and I don't even like chocolate ice cream that much. It's never been one of my favorites, but I found myself craving it for some reason. But it's found in the resistance. The ego does not like for you to resist it. It's only going to push back harder and harder the harder we try to resist it. That's why we stop with the resistance of ego. We make friends with it. We ask it if it would like to join us in our comfort zone for a little bit of Netflix. We stop using it to place labels and identities on everything and on ourselves. Pema says the heart of the practice is to notice all of this and rest in the middle of it all. I'm not trying to fix or alter anything. Now, I don't know about you, but I kind of like the notion of that a little bit, to just kind of kick back. And just relax and to say, hey, you know, that's okay even if it's with ego sometimes. You know, who doesn't like kicking back with a good friend? Invited in for some of that chocolate ice cream. We can also remain friends with it through our curiosity and by remaining open. The activity in our mind can continue, but we can sit with it in much the same way as we would a good Netflix movie. You know, watching it without being an active participant. Doing, as Pema says, nothing with it beyond just simply noticing. Just relaxing. Just letting go and just trusting the God within. Knowing that the connection with that God within will help us to ensure that we're trusting our divine guidance. And our intuition as we continue to navigate this human experience. Now, Pema also mentioned something this week that she states is outside of our comfort zone, and that is the subject of death. Now, she does mention physical death here of the human body and about how our physical bodies go through this cycle, the cycle of a beginning, which is a birth, you know, the middle, all that's in between life and death, and then the end, which is death of the physical body. And she talks about how some of us, probably a lot of us, likely have a fear of physical death. But that's not really what I want to focus on right now. She also talks about death in a different context. 
she mentions events and how events go through a cycle similar to that of the human body. Where events in our lives have a beginning, they have a middle, and they have an end. Each moment in our lives consists, even if it's just a flash of a moment, that moment still consists of a beginning, a middle, and an end. For instance, I'm not the same person that I was when this service started, and neither are you. The moment that this service started has already ended. Pema says, birth and death, birth and death, they keep going on and on continually and eternally. As we become more accustomed to this flow, we start seeing things in a fresh way. We notice the uniqueness of each moment. So I see some really good things out of this statement. One is that we aren't simply stuck in any particular moment. Destined to just keep living it over and over. That's one of the reasons why, I and mean, you may have heard me say this before, but I don't personally believe in making New Year's resolutions on New Year's Day. Because every single day, every single moment is the beginning of a new year. We can choose to begin again at any time. Each moment is a brand new moment being born. Pema says this means you always have another chance. You can never be stuck. Maybe one moment we're feeling really insecure due to a certain situation. Does it mean that you're still going to feel that way an hour from now? That moment's going to end. Are you still going to feel that way an hour from now? Likely not because that moment has passed on. It's in the past. And we may fall back into feeling insecure. And that moment will, always, or will also pass and so forth. And I know this stuff can get pretty deep and it's, it can be another subject all of its own. But just know this. No one is stuck in whatever it is that's going on right now, you know, whether it's COVID, whether it's all this election stuff going on out there, whatever it is. This moment, these moments are going to pass and new ones are going to be born. We always have the opportunity to begin again with new moments. Pema says there's no fixed you doomed to stay in the same rut forever. And there's not. Everything that happens is transitory. Everything that happens is a, is a moment in our lives that is going to pass. New ones will begin and then they're going to end. That's why it beca it's so important to live in the now. To practice the art of nowness. It's difficult when we're so busy living for tomorrow that we cannot see today. That we don't pause to see today. And that we're so busy we can't even see this moment. And I catch myself thinking, as I'm sure many of you do, that I can't wait until this pandemic is behind us. You know, I think of things that I want to do again all the time. I think about hugging people again. You know, not pass someone in a store without worrying about whether or not that person's getting too close and carrying the virus. You know, I, I look forward to going to movies and getting on an airplane and all kinds of things. And those moments are going to come again. But it's not right here and right now. The now is all that we have in any given moment. And it's up to us to decide to choose what we do with it. And the more we practice this, these teachings, the more we're going to be able to catch ourselves when we find that we're frantically running from one thing to the next without that pause. The more we'll catch ourselves when we, when we find ourselves placing labels on things in our lives. I know I've had conversations with several of you and we've talked about how we've caught ourselves doing these things. We've caught ourselves now putting labels on things. And the more we'll move further into the realization of just how often we get stuck in a story. Fearing that an undesirable moment or time in our lives is never going to pass. We don't have to just sit back and watch life pass us by as if we're observers just watching it on a movie screen. We can instead make the decision to become very actively involved. And we can do that by becoming fully engaged in each and every moment. Is each moment going to be exactly like what we want it to be or like we envision it to be? Likely not, but it doesn't mean that we cannot be fully present. It doesn't mean that we can't make friends with ego and learn to successfully coexist in the same space. So I invite you now to just close your eyes for just a moment. 
and just allow yourself to be for a moment. That grocery list, what it is that you're doing after the service, what you're doing tomorrow or for Thanksgiving, just give yourself a break from it for just a moment. Just allow yourself to be here and now. And you may open your eyes when you're ready. Namaste, everyone. Have a wonderful week. And now we've got our next special music. The jazz band is coming back up again. <laughs>